What's going on, coaches? Welcome back to the 4th and Goal podcast. Today, we are here with Coach Wayne Anderson, Jr. Coach Anderson has 30 years' experience in coaching football across the globe as well as in the States. It has afforded him the opportunity to travel over the world. He's had stops in Poland, Italy, Denmark, Norway, um, and as well as going all across America, having coached in California, Florida, New York, loads of experience, uh, and is known for his offensive uh, knowledge of the run and shoot. So today we shall be talking to him about the run and shoot offense and, and how that can be implemented in a program where time is of essence. As always, coaches' uh, links to his socials as well as any websites um, will be down below in the descriptions. So please go follow Coach and, and hit him up. Welcome, coaches, and uh, welcome, welcome, Coach Anderson. Thank you for giving up your time and, and speaking to us. Well, thank you, Josh, for having me. Brilliant. So, for the for the people uh, watching and, and listening. Um, Give a brief, quick introduction about yourself and how you came uh, to be where you are at the moment. Currently, I am the offensive line coach at Erskine College in Due West, South Carolina. We are in the process of bringing football back to Erskine College. That We have not played a snap of football since 1951. So our season starting in 2000, so we uh, on September 5th, so that will be the first time that we will uh, take a snap in 70 years. Wow. So we're going to be playing with freshmen and redshirt freshmen this fall. The, we actually have an uh, undefeated record against Clemson, South Carolina, and Florida State. Wow. But we don't tell people we played Florida State in 1948. <laughs> but, uh, but overall, I've been a, a football coach for 32 years. I've coached at every level, from the high school level to pro, the minor league football. And I have coached in Europe in four different countries with six different teams as either a head coach or offensive coordinator or both. And in 2018, I was blessed to be inducted into the minor league football Hall of Fame. Lovely. Lovely. So then, just on that, what a... What are some of the key differences between the game played in Europe and the game played in, in, in the States? Well, one of the, the bigger issues is, and I'm sure that, that you guys kind of had the same situation, is that in the States, when you practice all the time, the, you know, you're practicing you know, every day during the week, you, know, you have your games on the weekends, you know, you have um, your your training, your your weight training. I'll just say specifically at the college level. Yeah. You know, you'll have your your weight training. You'll have you know your nutrition plan. You'll have your pos- position meeting with your position coach plus a team meeting or an offense or defensive meeting. So it's a lot more encompassing to playing in Europe where. You have gentlemen who have regular jobs and they're working and, you know, a lot of times they're paying fees to belong to clubs Mm -hmm. and then you're practicing, if you're lucky, maybe three days a week. And that's usually from like about nine at night to 11 at night. And, you know, so you don't, and then you play your games. And so you don't have, a lot of even though you try to incorporate it in you don't have a lot of meeting time with your players Mm -hmm. you know either as a position group or as an offense or a defense per you know per se a lot of times you kind of do team meetings while you're out on the field and and that's one of the bigger differences because you'll see a lot of division three college football programs that'll come over and play friendlies in europe Mm -hmm. and you know they're even at that level they're quite successful against you know most most teams in europe because they have that advantage of practicing and and playing and things of that things of that nature i know that when i was the offensive coordinator of the lazio marines in rome italy in 2008 we played adrian college which was a small division three school in michigan Mm -hmm. And we ended up losing twenty-eight to nothing. 
which, you know, we actually, you know, we played a pretty good game. We actually moved the ball between the 20s on them and couldn't get it in the end zone. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and then we, you know, Coach Harbaugh of Michigan, he was in Rome two years ago and in France doing um, clinics and stuff with his with his guys. And so, you know, you're really starting to see things expand, you know, kind of a, a fortunate byproduct of this coronavirus is that you're getting a lot more coaches on on zoom calls with you know coaches and organizations in europe you know from the states and so there's a lot more information being spread through you know avenues like zoom than there has been in the past so i think that's you know a tremendous benefit for both the coaches in the states and uh, players and coaches throughout europe and other par other parts of the country so then you you um you mentioned you've coached offense and, and been a head coach both overseas and, and in America. Um, what is your coaching philosophy? And then how does that translate into your system and your schematics? The, I learned a long time ago from a gentleman that I worked for at Ithaca High School in Ithaca, New York, back in the early early 90s and he used to say that to have a successful program you have to have two things one you got to be able to recruit good players and two you have to be able to motivate them so if you you get good players and they're motivated properly then you're always going to have a successful program and that's something that a good friend of mine that we were on that staff together and he coaches high school football out in Las Vegas, Nevada. And we still say the same things, you know, 25 years later that we did when we learned, learned from that, that particular head coach a long time ago. So those are, you know, the two biggest things. And, and that's true. And it's, you know, the, with recruiting with, with teams like your guys's, you know, there's a lot of different avenues Mm -hmm. you know, to do that and, you know, getting good quality, and it's not just players, but getting good quality people as part of your organization, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty key. That, that my philosophy, that I have studied the run and shoot offense for 32 years now, and I, I've coached it when I've been able to, the opportunity to be an offensive coordinator that is the offensive choice that I that I coach. I've coached other offensive systems and studied other offensive systems, you know, throughout the years. But that's the system that I that I hang my hat on because that offense, compared to any other offense that's designed, number one, it's it's guaranteed to be a system that will help you in situations of coming back. The offense is built for comebacks, so you're never out. You're never out of a game because of the the, the nature of how that offense is designed. Mm -hmm. You know, for teams that that say, for instance, run the wishbone or run wing T and stuff, that they're great offenses when you're ahead or within striking distance. But if you get behind, it, it's hard to to try to come from behind and win in those type of offenses because they're just not designed to come back to come back. Now the run and shoot is an offense that's always designed to come back no matter where you are in the game. Now mm -hmm. we'll just say it a lot of a lot of times that we just ran out of time. We didn't lose the game, we just ran out of time. <laughs> but that's been, you know, been my offensive philosophy again for many years and the one i think is that the players that play in it have a lot of fun they enjoy doing it you know that you're running you're catching you're blocking that it's not like you know running the wing tee where you know the running backs are getting the snap beat out of them every practice that's and then you got receivers that are out there that are basically hood ornaments on cars you know that's not a lot that's not a lot of fun mm -hmm. That when I played in high school, I was one of those six three hood ornaments. And when we ran the eye, and our tailback got the ball thirty five times a game. Yep. So, <laughs> so I learned how to stock block real well. <laughs> Brilliant. So then, but, uh, so so from that, just quickly, the run and the run and shoot. Obviously, it's known 
for the post snap reads, right? Like there's there's so many options on particular routes yeah. for players. How, exactly. How do you go about teaching that, especially with overseas, where where you may well, only have two that's sessions? A, that's a good. That's a good question. Let me see if I can find what I did with my pen here. That you can do it in Europe. I'll tell you a story. The second time I was in Italy in Bari, I had uh, an Italian quarterback that couldn't speak, speak a lick of English. And I had a outside receiver that spoke pretty good English. And we we we're work on uh, one-on-one running the running the choice, the single receiver, and these two have never done this. And I explain the ru- the rules to the receiver. I explain through an interpreter what the quarterback's read was based on coverage and leverage. Mm-hmm. And honest honest truth, we ran that ten times, and the quarterback and the receiver made the right read ten times in a row. Right, and we had never done it. We had never done it before that. So, what what I do, and hopefully you you guys can see this, and if you can't, there is a thing called the seam read. Mm-hmm. All right, and there's a seam read in every pass pattern. There's at least one one player running the seam read, and what that is is that you have a player that will go. To 15 yards, that's what the landmark is, Mm -hmm. 15 yards. And then he's going to make a decision based on the coverage that he sees. So what I do before I teach an an entire concept is that I run a drill like this where I have a safety in the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. I have a coach behind him. So the safety's at 12 yards. Yep. Then I have the quarterback down here. And what we do is that we line up everybody, all the receivers right here, mm-hmm. because all of them have to learn how to do a seam read. They have to, whether you're an outside receiver running a switch mm-hmm. or if you're an inside receiver running the seam read with different routes, everybody has to learn it. So we line up. Now, uh, quick question: With your your rules in in Australia, do you run high school hash marks or college hash? Marks? Uh, college, college. So okay, we're so still IFAF this like would Italy. Be, so, and this is important when we talk about landmarks and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you would want your receiver two yards outside your hash. Okay, because that's that's the high school hash mark. And the landmarks in the run and shoot offense, the way Coach Davis teaches it, that the high school hash marks are the landmarks to get to. So what we do with this drill is say if that's the high school hash mark. Mm-hmm. We have a receiver at the snap of the ball. Usually I like the quarterback to go away from the receiver. So he's in the gun. He takes a three-step slide step to the left. Mm-hmm. He is now – reading this safety this coach will tell this safety to either drop straight back go towards the receiver or away from the receiver Mm -hmm. and we constitute the middle of the field when he's reading the free safety the middle of the field we consider the middle of the field the width of the goal post so if this safety is anywhere within the width of the goal post we consider him the middle of the field Mm -hmm. So ball snap, coach says drop straight back. So he drops straight back. When I get to my landmark at 15 yards, when I see him dropping straight back, then I'm going to throw up my outside arm, and then I'm going to hook up and find the open window back to the quarterback. So the quarterback's also going to read the safety. Mm -hmm. He sees he's dropped straight back. He sees that arm indicator that that the receiver's hooking up. We throw the ball. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, same scenario. Coach says, all right, go away from the receiver. So it's snap of the ball. The safety drops away from the receiver. Mm-hmm. Receiver gets to his landmark at 15 yards, reads that the safety's going away from me. 
then I continue to go straight straight upfield and Mouse will say that equals this. <laughs> then you hit your head on the goalpost. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, the other scenario is that snap of the ball, coach says go towards the receiver. So the receiver make or the safety makes this type of drop. Yep. So when the receiver gets to his landmark and he sees that he's coming towards him, and this is an important factor about running competitively to space and running to oak green grass. So he sees this, he's going to snap it across that guy's face and run to the green grass that he just vacated. Mm hmm. And then we'll, and then when we get real good at that, on both sides of the ball, then the next thing we do is we add a second level defender, okay. in there, to make that receiver avoid that second level defender. Mm -hmm. And then he gets back up here, and then when we get real good at that, then we do it with two safeties. Right. So we got a safety here. In a, in a safety here. So we're reading this safety. Mm -hmm. So, same scenario. Snap of the ball. Both these safeties just sink like, like in cover four. Yep. And we see them both sink. I'm going to throw my arm up. I'm going to hook up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I see a rotation to to me so like even if it's an invert mm -hmm. or a buzz or a cloud coverage and that safety rolls to the middle of the field same thing we revert back to single safety high principles right. but he's rotating into the middle of the field so i'm going to throw my arm up and hook up mm -hmm. now if i get a rotation away or this safety rotates away, yep. this safety rotates away, then I'm going to continue to go vertical upfield. Mm -hmm. And then if we get both of these safeties, if they split like they wouldn't cover two, yeah. that safety splits, that safety splits, then same thing. I get to my landmark, I'm going to snap it across his face to the green grass. But we want to make that tight. So yeah. this safety is not involved with the situation. Mm -hmm. So And so that's how we do it. And again, we get good at that. Then we add the second level defender to elude him. And so before I teach choice or go or switch or anything like that, that we run this drill first and foremost. Okay. So guys understand how to run the seam read. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in my offense, there's a couple of other variations, what we call a street read and a fork read and uh, uh, option route, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's, you know, later later on down in the process. But we want to get, get to this first because this is the primary. When everybody learns to do this, and it's based on repetition, repetition, very much like um, um, option offense. These two styles of offense um, – need repetition mm -hmm. and that's one of the one of the common factors of the two of them is because of because of reps and that's why when teams i was just talking to a coach yesterday that's a flex bone team and wants to add run and shoot principles mm -hmm. i told him i said you've got to make a decision either a you're going to be a running team or b you're going to be a passing team mm -hmm. because and in, in this isn't you know me saying it that i've heard mouse say it on different occasions that if you try to marry both of those concepts you're not going to be really good at either one yeah. because of the factor of repetition because you're taking away repetition in one area for another mm -hmm. so that's why you gotta kind of got to decide all right i'm going to be more of a flex bone run team so i'll put in a couple of passing concepts like a like the the big big four i would say you know choice go verticals and switch okay. you know and i wouldn't you know venture any more any more than that mm -hmm. just just because of the uh again the um repetition factor mm -hmm. 
But then, but like I said, we get if you're you know, if you're a coach that's going to be totally committed to to running the deal, then you know I start out with that first, and then I build use a technique called scaffolding, where we build on mastery. Mm-hmm. So when we install something, we get it to a point of mastery, and then we add the next phase to it, and we don't just because we have an installment sheet, say, well, we're installing this day one, we're installing this day two, we're installing this day three. If you can't do day one right, then it makes no sense of installing day two and day three. Yep. But that's, you know, that's, you know, been my, my philosophy. And again, I didn't think of that up, that I stole that from June Jones and Miles Davis. <laughs> Brilliant. So then with, with that, you're, you're teaching the same read day one. And it's, yeah. it's basically the first thing you're doing in practice, you know, the the way practices are, uh, you know, sort of scheduled and, and laid out. What are what are the f- first sort of plays you're putting in then so that you are scaffolding on that seam read and, and that's the, the main part of the play? What I what I do with what I do with that in kind of helping like with the sake of seven on seven and things like that, that when we first start teaching the seam read Mm -hmm. I'll install what I would say quick game passes. So at least when you go into seven on seven, Mm -hmm. you know, you've got, you know, a a number of routes, quick game routes that you can run. Mm -hmm. Um, Verticals outs, all slants, hitching verticals, different, different thing. I think I have like about six or seven different quick game concepts that are mirror, mirror concepts. So there, there isn't any real teaching per se involved with like trying to teach a scene read. Mm-hmm. So when we're when we're doing that, then usually the first concept that that I teach is, is the go. Okay. And and the go is the what you would consider the go is the gold standard route in the run and shoot offense, and it's something that you can incorporate into any offensive system. Mm-hmm. The the go and the choice are two plays that you can incorporate whatever you do. Whether you're, a, you know, an eleven personnel team, if, you know, if you're, you know, split back, split back with twins and stuff. There's different, you know, with motion and different things mm-hmm. that you can uh, um, incorporate both of those things. But let me get a paper towel so I can wipe this board off. No worries. And another thing with the run and shoot, when you teach it, you've got to teach your players to understand the difference between coverage routes and landmark routes. Okay. Because they are different. Now, the go is a coverage route. Mm -hmm. Choice is a landmark route. Okay. Verticals is a landmark route. Switch is a landmark route. Um, Slide is is a coverage route. You know, so you got to kind of know the difference, and that's why it's important to understand, you know, with with your guys, that the landmark is two yards outside the hat outside your hatch. Mm-hmm. So, so we'll talk about the go. Sweet. Which again is the, is the gold standard. Mm-hmm. And and Mouse will say this anytime when when all else. When all else fails and everything's going to the crapper, when all else fails, run rip sixty Z go. And it is true it is true. I've done it on a couple of different ca- occasions when I was thinking of oh, what's a play I'm gonna run? What of a play I'm gonna run? And I'll hear run go, run go, run go. And <laughs> I'll end up doing it. Now the go spacing is very important mm-hmm. between the number two and number three receiver. So let me get the number one receiver here. We'll talk about. And now with with the go between the number number two and number three. So I always count count outside in. Mm-hmm. Now it's a little bit of a difference to, to, depending if you're underneath center or if you're in the gun. Mm-hmm. 
because if you're underneath center, you've got to teach your quarterback to be able to run the half the half roll. Yep. And, and that takes a little bit takes a little bit of time. If you're in the gun, you're teaching him the slide step. Mm-hmm. And the play develops a little bit faster underneath center. And Miles actually prefers to play underneath center much more than in the gun. Mm-hmm. So we'll just say for this here, we'll say, and you always, anytime you put in a route, you always teach, teach it against single safety high first and foremost. Okay. So you got a single safety high here, you've got a safety here, and you've got a corner here. Mm-hmm. And with the go. Your quarterback is reading the, the defender over number two. Mm-hmm. So whatever the defender over number two does is wrong. Now, what he will do at the snap of the ball, he will work the outside shoulder mm-hmm. of the, de- the defender over him. And if he widens, then he's going to continue to widen. Number one, he's got a mandatory outside release. Yep. So he's outside releasing, taking that corner with him. Mm-hmm. Now, the technique that I teach with number three in teaching this route, we put a cone at 10 yards. Let's just say, for instance, this is 10 yards. Yep. Here. We teach him to take a straight angle to that cone. Okay. Now my straight angle isn't that straight. <laughs> take a straight angle to that cone. Mm-hmm. Now here, these two are no wider than five yards and no closer than two. Okay. Is because you want to get a good rub from this guy. Mm-hmm. Now what what I do, which is a little bit more of uh, uh, principle of more vertical that I have him do what I call a streak read, which is a little bit different than a seam read. A streak read is basically I'm either going vertical or if this guy jumps me, Mm -hmm. I'm breaking it across his face. Right, okay. Now, what they've done out of the gun nowadays, because it's a little bit more of a slower developing play, Mm -hmm. they make this a true seam read. Okay. So, but and then against cover two, They'll back shoulder throw this guy so he doesn't get knocked out by the half field safety. Mm-hmm. But this is how I, I particularly teach it because I want to get more vertical push. With it. Mm-hmm. And with this with this number two, you want to hit him probably around 12 to 15 yards. And if you can get it to him faster, that's even great. But when he gets to that about that 12 yard mark. 10 to 12 yard mark. That means he's cleared the under coverage. Mm-hmm. And so with the quarterback, it's a, it's a easy read per se, because if you see, see that defender open his hips, mm-hmm. that's telling you that he's going to run with the shoot route. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to buzz that ball right behind his ear. If he sinks, then you know, you're going to throw the shoot route. Mm-hmm. Now, again, you get real good at that. You know, there's, different variations of the go route. You can run uh, go go special, you can run go switch, there's go corner. There's And that's one of the beauties of the offense that you can build in concepts that you already teach. Right. Or what I like to do, even though it's what they call a man, the man beater for this, is that it's a, a, uh, a rub, because I won't say it's a pick route, it's a rub. <laughs> And what I do is I make it a call myself personally, but um, I call it um, go ice because it's an ice pick, right. but we don't pick people, we rub <laughs> them. So if we get you know, some type of man free where you've got a defender here and a dem- defender here, mm-hmm. you know, we'll call, call go ice. So his route is the same. The difference is what he does. What he does is that he takes three angle steps and then snaps it back across, which, you know, hope the concept is that these two guys are going to run into each other or they have to run some type of 
situation where he's got to be higher than him. Mm -hmm. And so that that's how we get to clear against man coverage. Okay. But if you watch the old run and shoot um, instructional tapes that Mouse made back in the 90s, mm -hmm. that's, that's the man conversion. If you get some type of cover one or something, you know, for me, I, I tag it. Yep. So, you know, it's just a difference, your, you know, your preference. Right. And then, like I said, if it's too safety high, like I said, again, for me, I use I use a streak read instead of a seam read mm -hmm. because what I do out of the gun with my quarterback out of the gun, instead of it being a, a slow three-step half roll, I mean, excuse me, a three-step um, slide, slide step, which, again, makes this a longer route, I have him kind of basically take – Two, two steps this way to get rid of the ball, kind of incorporating the same principles as the half roll yep. and getting it out of his hand faster. So I'm trying to get the ball out of his hand faster. So the same thing, I do this. He's here. He reads that safety. I'm either going vertical or I'm snapping it across his face. Mm -hmm. Now, like you said, if you listen to Coach Jones, you know, nowadays what they'll do is the same thing but they'll make it a true seam read and he'll get to his 15 landmark. You know, he'll read this. If it's, you know, if he's dropping, if he's here, if he's here, if it's man, you know, he's snapping it across. So what they do here, once he clears that under coverage, they'll back shoulder throw this mm -hmm. to protect him from here because he'll come up and just yeah. knock the snout out of him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's, that's the go route. And again, it's it's a little easier to throw it to your quarterback's dominant side. It takes a little bit more of a technique, getting the shoulders turned and stuff. Yeah. If you're a right-handed quarterback, throwing it to the left, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're under center and you're trying to teach him the half roll to the left, that he's got to get those shoulders turned really quick, which makes it a little difficult. And some guys couldn't do it. You know, Miles would tell me stories like when Jeff George was with the Atlanta Falcons. Jeff George couldn't half roll to the left, so he had the slide step to the left anytime right. they threw a ball to the left-hand side mm. when he was underneath center. Same thing, Warren Moon didn't do it, wasn't great with half roll to the left. But he slid, slide stepped more when he was with the Oilers. Right. And then, you know, when we get real good at that, the next route we talk about is the choice. Mm -hmm. And again, this is all based on leverage. When you're teaching the choice, and this is a great for, because it's away from the three receiver side. Right. Now on the back side of choice, you've got, now again, this is where you want to have number two lining up on the high school hash mark. Mm -hmm. You've got a seam read. Right. That's why choice is a landmark route. Mm -hmm. He's got a shallow. He's controlling the linebackers in here. Mm -hmm. And then he's got an outside release. And same thing. If he's, which is a little caveat, he's breaking up field and he can't break that cushion. Say we're, we'll always talk about single safety high. Yep. He can't break that cushion. He gets about 10 to 12. He'll throw his arm up. Lovely. Now, to the front side, it's all based on the leverage and the depth of the corner. Mm -hmm. So what we have here is that by the outside receiver's fifth step, he's going to determine on if he's going to run the out or if he's going to run skinny post. Now, this post is real skinny. It's like if you were on a clock, mm -hmm. you would make that break at 1 o'clock. Okay. So so the same thing, if we were running to this side, the Z receiver would make that break at 11. Yep. Now, he's going to work on the outside shoulder of the defensive back. Now, if that defensive back is five yards or more, mm -hmm. when he hits that fifth step, He's going to run the out. 
if that corner is three yards or less, then he's going to snap it across his face and get skinny and get get up the field running the post. Right. And so, and that's something that you work with your quarterbacks and your outside receivers every day. Mm -hmm. Now, same thing that I teach a little differently than Mouse. You know, for the sake of argument, we got two safety, two safety high. Mm -hmm. Now, saying I use the same premise. Now, if that corner is going to squat, then it's an automatic outside release, and I'm going to the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. If that corner drops, like in a cover four, mm -hmm. or what they call a cover two read, that you know he'll drop unless there's a threat to the flat. Yeah. That I teach the same thing, that if he's dropping, it's like cover four, by the time I hit that fifth step, if he's five yards off of me, I'm going to run the out. If he's three yards or closer to me, then I'm going to okay. break it outside and go vertical upfield. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if your guys have a lot of uh, corners you guys face that play open technique. Mm-hmm. Where they're 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 rear ends to the sideline. Yeah, we have a few. Now, now Miles, when he talks about that, he treats that as man as a man technique. Okay. I still treat it as his own technique. So if you got a guy that's playing open technique, we work that that front side hip mm -hmm. in same premise. If he's five yards off of me, I'm I'm running the out. If he is three yards. I'm going to snap it across this face, single safety high, mm -hmm. and break it upfield. If I know it's two safety high and he's playing, playing the open technique and dropping the same thing. If he's three yards or less, right. I'm snapping it across him and, and getting to that sweet spot. Mm -hmm. And then on the back side, again, you've got a seam read, you've got a shallow cross, it um, no deeper than five yards. Mm -hmm. And then you've got outside release here. Now, the importance with the seam read, or excuse me, the, the shallow, he's responsible for controlling the linebackers in the box and mm -hmm. what we consider a dog. In my offense, a blitz is anything from the perimeter. A dog is anything inside the box. So there's a difference between the two. So he controls the dogs. So Say, for instance, if one dog blitzes, if it's a 4-2. A yep. He's going to settle in there. He's going to call hot, 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 hot. Mm -hmm. And he's going to replace that blitzing dog right there. Right. Now, again, if it's man coverage, he's just going to come all the way across. Mm -hmm. Zone, he's going to kind of throttle it down a little bit to work the windows. Like I said, you got a seam read here. You got outside release, and again, if he can't break that coverage over the top, he's going to throw his arm up and, and work his way back. Right. But the progression for the quarterback is a tri is a triangle read. He's reading one to two to three. Okay. So everybody, everybody will see that. So he's reading one to two to three. Okay. And. That doesn't that doesn't that doesn't change because you know for instance if you change it and you run choice special which means these two guys exchange responsibilities the read's still the same it's still one two to three right and that's one of the great things about the offense is that like I said you can move the chess pieces around and the the coaching isn't any different. You know, so and there's a you know different variations from choice from choice that you can run on the back side. You can run choice, you can run choice special, you can run choice switch, you can run choice drag. So you know there's a lot of you know, you can actually even run choice smash on the back where you've got a smash concept on that. Right. So the, the one of the great things about this offense is that you can integrate different aspects of the offense mm -hmm. and that's how you build your build your playbook. Okay. So then is that so if you got, you know, now I'm what you would more consider I'm more classically trained mm -hmm. in the run and shoot. Now I'm still, you know, studying some of the, the newer concepts that Coach Jones is doing now, like Georgia and Army and 
Okay. Um, you know, what I, those type of concepts. I'm I'm studying those myself. I'm more classic, classically, classically trained, and so I I coach a lot of the more classical uh, route concepts. Mm-hmm. But then you know, those are the first the first two, because these because the go and the choice are the two most difficult mm-hmm. pass concepts to learn, right. and then everything after that is a lot easier. Ver- you know, four verticals is easy. Switch is easy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you run. I run curl flat with a seam read. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's you know that those as when you lo- learn those two concepts, everything else is a lot is a lot easier to learn. Brilliant. And then, like I said, then you can you can integrate different different aspects of the, of the offense. Okay. Together, and that's how you build build your your offensive playbook and it's it's no different teaching and the the neat thing is that your outside receivers will learn both sides of the ball you know both sides Mm -hmm. because they're running the same routes right so so for instance if you had an injury to your x receiver Mm -hmm. and your z receiver is your next best receiver you can move your z to x Right. And bring in your next guy to play the position because they're learning the same thing. Same thing with the slot receivers. Mm-hmm. They're learning the same the same routes and same route concepts. So if one guy goes down, you can plug in another guy yeah. that's run that's running those routes. So it, and that's why repetition is so key is to um, help help with with guys getting accustomed to to run in those route concepts. Okay. And then like I said, you you get you know easier per se for like when you teach four verticals. If we're say we're running uh sixty vertical for argument, so the quarterback's going this way. Okay. He's mandatory outside release. We'll just talk about free safety high, single safety high. Mm-hmm. He is outside releasing, and he is on the high school hash mark because right. vertical is a is a landmark route. Mm-hmm. Now, some coaches like to call what they teach a bender technique, where they bend it back inside, especially against two safety high. Mm-hmm. This is a lock technique. He is locked. To right. run this outside release because number two on the back side, mm-hmm. he's got the seam read. Right. So you don't want to run some some type of banana or some type of route in here to close stuff down. That's why these two guys are on the high school hash marks and basically these two guys are on the top of the numbers. Right. So again, well, we talked about seam read. Quarterbacks here. He's on a lock. He's outside release, and he's reading one mm-hmm. to two to three. Okay. So again, he's reading free safety. Free safety jumps the front side. He knows he's going going back side. If he stays in the middle of the field, more than likely he's going to go back side to the seam read. Mm-hmm. And if he you know jumps the seam read because we've been hitting that, yeah, then. We're, we're we're hitting him at about twelve to fifteen yards, and and he's running for a touchdown. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's an easy concept. And then switch means that these two are exchanging responsibilities. Right. So it's still four vertical, mm-hmm. but I'm coming in here and doing getting that. to my fifteen and making making my my decision based on the coverage, mm-hmm. and I'm running a wheel route. Uh-huh. to get to where he was so again it's no different no difference in teaching technique and the quarterback's read is exactly the same it's one to two to three yeah okay so you know there are times where you could you know throw up front side the front side one but a lot of times he's his whole job is to control coverage especially if you got a cover two situation and that corner just just sits you know, then you've got a situation where you could put the ball in there, especially mm-hmm. if that safety doesn't come off the hash. 
Right. You know, so that that is an that is an option. You know, so those you know those four routes, you know, are are base base vanilla routes that yep. you know you can install in any offense. Okay. And then, like I said, there's there's other options. You know, there's what I would say. You know, there's curl out of three by one. There's mm-hmm. smash out of three by one. There is um, slide out of three by one, which I don't run run as much anymore. Mm-hmm. Kind of the old, you know, more classic run and shoot concepts. You know, now you know a lot of people run divide, which is a great route concept. You know, based to help with the single receiver side. Yep. You know, so that's you know that's a good route. And like I said, there's I tell people all the time. I use a, a an ice cream analogy, a mm-hmm. Neapolitan ice cream. That if you learn vanilla, if you learn base vanilla, you can add chocolate and strawberry to it. <laughs> and 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 the neat thing about the offense is that if you learn the base concepts, you know, you can make it your own because there'll be times where Mouse will tell me that he's watched, you know, some offenses of what guys are doing and he doesn't even know what they're doing <laughs> because they made it, made it their own, their own flavor right. after learning, learning the base concepts. Okay. But there, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of different things that you, you can do and you build, your offense based on like those those six base classic classic plays Mm -hmm. and then you can you know expand by tagging routes and things of that nature to you know expand expand your offensive system brilliant so then with with those uh like choice and and go i noticed they were all out of three by one is that deliberate or is there a two by two version of them that you can now i've i've developed two by two version of it Mm -hmm. that basically ends up like if you run choice it basically ends up choice special okay so so i would call choice special out of uh two by two so instead of choice special instead because remember when we call special, mm-hmm. special means that number two and number three are exchanging, excuse me, exchanging responsibilities. Yep. So if we called choice special, that meant means that number three would be running the seam read. Okay. And number two would be running the shallow. So we're doing the same thing. Instead of him being over here as a number three, he's over here as front side two. So you have your choice route here. You have your seam read here. Mm-hmm. You have your outside release here, and you got him coming across this way. So if we were running 61x choice, so the quarterback's going this way. So that is an option to be able to run choice out of uh, two by two. Right. That you would call, you know, your doubles formation, whatever that is, and it would mm-hmm. be whatever choice special, whatever your number would be for your pass protection or how you would call. Mm-hmm. So that would be choice special. And you can run the same. And I've worked with coaches that do the same thing. You can run go out of two by two. You just don't have you just don't have a seam read. Okay. That I'll just say because it's mirrored. Mm-hmm. That you got outside release and you've got that to ten angle to ten yards. Okay. Now again, you do something like that. You can do that on the front side. And you can run switch on the backside. Mm-hmm. Same thing like with smash. One coach that I worked worked for, when we called smash, it was never a mirror mirror route out of two by two. That we ran smash to the front side and we ran switch to the backside. So the quarterback was reading one to two to three. Right. And so that's what I'm saying. How you build build concepts mm-hmm. into your offense by by that way. That's how you, you expand expand your playbook. Okay. Now, with running go out of two by two, that used to be a, a, a play long time ago, coach that I worked for. We used to call that Apache for whatever reason. <laughs> so Apache, and matter of fact, that's what we're calling it at Erskine this year. Is we're calling because we we only run, we'll run go out of 
out of two by two because of the nature of our splits. Right. So, you know, we're incorporating, we're calling that a, a patchy this fall. Okay. So you can, you, you can run those two things out of two by two. Mm -hmm. You just like, for instance, if you're running choice, it's a, it's choice, really it's choice special. Yeah. Because you're having that receiver that would run the, shallow cross and choice especially you just have him on the other side of the field running to the exact same spot right yep okay and then with that the half roll or the slide from the gun is that 100 percent necessary like what is the purpose of that drop okay two two purposes now i'll 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 go with talking about the half roll first underneath center mm -hmm. underneath the center of the old so if you go on uh youtube mm -hmm. and you see games from the houston gamblers from the mid 1980s and you watch jim kelly yep you'll be able to see what the half roll looks like and with the half roll with uh the center and the quarterback okay mm -hmm. if you're a right-handed quarterback and you're half rolling you're either throwing off your third step, your fifth step, or your seventh step. Okay. Now, if you're a right-handed quarterback and you're half rolling to the left, it's one more step. So you're throwing off your fourth step, your sixth step, or your eighth step. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So with the half roll, the first, first step is at 6 o'clock, and it's a very elongated step. Yep. That it's it's a big it's a big punch step and your toe with that foot is pointing at six o'clock and then you gradually work your third step to your fifth step right to your okay. seventh step and the way i used to teach it is i put cones so you would go around the cones and the same thing this way you would take that big first punch first step big punch step and then as you're working to your fourth step you're getting your shoulders cocked around to be able to throw. Mm -hmm. And then you're working off your, your fourth step, your sixth step, your eighth step. Right. And so like for instance, choice underneath center, that's a five that's a five step route, basically mm -hmm. for your quarterback. If he's half rolling, that's a five step half roll. Or a six step half roll. Okay. And then go. Go is basically you're either throwing or it's kind of a progression which which go is really one of the few routes that you actually throw on the run okay underneath center compared to half rolling and maybe stopping at five or stopping at six like you would with choice mm -hmm. so you're either going to depending on you know that action you're either going to throw it off your third step your fifth step or your seventh step and if you get past seven then you just keep keep going and the other thing I forgot to, to mention with go, a conversion for number three who's running the shoot route. Mm -hmm. If he gets to the numbers and starts running out of out of real estate, mm -hmm. then he's gonna turn turn it up the sideline. Okay. So the quarterback, his rule is if he's running out of space or he gets a pump fake from the quarterback, then he's taking it up the sideline. Okay. So that's that's his convert route conversion out of that deal. So that's the that's the half roll. And like I said, I would um, go to YouTube and mm -hmm. see any of the Houston Houston Gamblers um, TV games that are that are on YouTube, and you'll be able to see Jim Kelly really work quite well with the half roll technique when you're. In the gun, you're slide stepping three steps to the left or three steps to the right. Now the technique is a little different mm -hmm. if you're a right-hander coming this way compared to this way. That um, I know you can't really see see my feet, but if you're, for instance, if you are slide stepping to your right. Then you're here and you're taking, and if you think about it as a clock, you're slide stepping, you're basically stepping in either five o'clock 
for seven o'clock. Okay. So I am one, two, three, mm -hmm. or if I'm going to the left, I'm taking that that first step with my left leg. So I'm here one, two, three, and basically that four step is your plant is your plant step. Right. Now the reason for the half roll and for slide stepping in the gun is geometry mm -hmm. because if you in the way of the nature the old old way they used to teach pass protection now the backside defensive end if you're half rolling or back here slide stepping mm -hmm. that's more distance he has the cover compared to like an air raid where he's just dropping straight back mm -hmm. so it's it's really it's based on geometry right that it's a longer distance that that backside defender has to travel so that's the reason and in the early days that drop helps manipulate the secondary so that was the, that was the other reason or purpose for the half roll or like more nowadays, the, the slide step in the gun. Mm -hmm. So again, it creates a longer distance for the backside end and it manipulates the coverage. Okay. Brilliant. Well, well, thank you for that. I, uh, I appreciate that. It was really insightful. Um, and it's, uh, very interesting to see how the those post snap progressions can still be run um at at an amateur semi-professional level so thank you oh you're welcome i'm glad to be able to help it was uh it's brilliant so you know for people watching feel free to to shoot shoot coach anderson a message um i'm sure he'll happily when he's got the time after rebuilding Erskine, I'm sure he'll happily talk to you about uh, run and shoot. It's been extremely insightful and informative for me. Well, absolutely. I am, I am very much uh, like my mentor, Miles Davis, that I give out information freely. I'm not one of those coaches that's going to charge you 200 bucks for for my uh, offensive system or what have you, which is, it's fine. You know, coaches do that. They have every right to do that, try to make, you know, some money per se. Mm -hmm. I just don't do that. Like I said, I give out information freely because, you know, the bottom line is that people still got to execute it, still got to defend it. So mm -hmm. hey, absolutely. Anybody that would like to ask any questions, you know, they can contact me at any time.